Hi everyone and welcome back to another video. My name is Anna and I am a critical care registered nurse. In this video, we are going to be talking about PDAs again. This week, we are going to talk about PDAs or a patent ductus arteriosus in a term baby. If you missed the video last week, I would highly recommend that you start there and I will link that description for you down below. But in that video, we talked about PDAs in preterm babies and um, how that can relate to some of the patho that you see. And when you understand the patho, you can predict symptoms. We are going to do the same exact thing this week, but we are going to look at what a patent ductus arteriosus looks like and problems that it can cause if it stays open in a term baby. Now we are going to be using a very, very simplified diagram of the heart to go over this information. And this heart is so simplified that I haven't even drawn in any valves or anything like that. So just know that the goal of this video is to give you a framework to build upon later. We are omitting a lot of details. And so just know that this is very much a bird's eye view, lay of the land of what a patent ductus arteriosus can look like in a term kid. We are going to be using an example to look at this patho. And the example that we will use is a persistent pulmonary hypertension of the newborn picture or PPHN for short. PPHN means that there's pretty much just a lingering pressure inside of the lungs. So a lot of things can cause this and we are going to use this as an example of um, how this can cause a PDA to stay open in a term baby. Before we dig in too much of this example so that you can understand the patho, let's take a step back and look at this simplified heart and make sure that we understand how blood normally flows through the heart. You can see that we started off with four boxes which represent the four chambers of the heart. And deoxygenated blood is coming from all over the body into the heart via the inferior and superior vena cava and that is dumping into the right atrium. From the right atrium, we go to the right ventricle where the blood is then pumped via the pulmonary artery into the lungs. The deoxygenated blood is oxygenated in the lungs and then comes back to the left side of the heart via the pulmonary veins. And remember that there is no mixing of the blood on either side of the heart, that these two chambers on each side stay completely separate. After the blood is dumped into the left atrium from the pulmonary veins, this oxygenated blood then goes into the left ventricle and then finally into the aorta where it is distributed throughout the body. Note here that on this drawing, I have drawn three branches of the aorta, and these three are important branches. The first is the brachial cephalic artery. And notice that this first branch um, occurs right before the PDA. And after the PDA, we have two more branches. We have the left common carotid and the subclavian artery as well. We'll talk about this PDA more in just a minute, but again, note the importance that the PDA is below the first branch. Now I said earlier that the blood in the left side and the right side of the heart stays completely separate. And this is true in a normal adult. But in utero, there are two different passageways, two different shortcuts that allows the blood to get to the placenta more efficiently where it will be oxygenated. And the first pathway, which we won't talk very much about in this video, is a PFO or a patent foramen ovale. And that is a little passageway between the right and the left atrium, and that will close shortly after birth. The second pathway is the PDA, the patent ductus arteriosus, and this is a pathway from the pulmonary artery to the aorta. In utero, the pressures in the lungs are really high because the lungs are filled with fluid and no oxygen exchange is happening in utero. This is the placenta's job. So blood doesn't need to go through the lungs and most of the blood, in fact, about 90% of the blood is shunted away from the lungs, going from right to left across the PDA towards the placenta where it can be oxygenated. Now blood flows away from these areas of high pressure in the lungs because blood is really lazy. Blood takes the path of least resistance and blood flow in the heart is dependent on pressure. 
when the pressure in the lungs is really high, blood is not going to fight through that. It is going to take the shortcut across the PDA, moving from right to left to go towards the placenta. This is the path of least resistance. This is a highly efficient system before a baby is born, but this pathway between the pulmonary artery and the aorta can cause some problems if it does not close after a baby is born. We talked about this in the first video, but in premature babies, sometimes these babies don't get all of the signals that a term baby will get that cause the PDA to close, so this PDA will stay open and cause a lot of different problems. If you want to know what some of those problems are, I would recommend checking out the first video. In this video, we are going to talk about one of the things that can help keep the pressures inappropriately high in the lungs, um, an increased pulmonary pressure, which can cause the PDA to stay open and cause a different type of patho. So how does the fluid usually leave the lungs in a healthy term baby? Well, fluid starts to leave the lungs before a baby is born, during labor, during delivery, and during the baby's first few breaths as it is born. The pressure in the lungs changes and decreases as that fluid moves away, and it also decreases with oxygen changes as that allows the vessels to dilate. One of the reasons that we will assess a preductal oxygen saturation in a newborn nursery is to evaluate lingering pressures inside of the lungs. Remember also that the preductal oxygen saturation is a oxygen saturation reflected in that first branch of the aorta, the brachiocephalic artery. This artery is above the PDA, so it will reflect an oxygenated blood saturation. And this artery runs from, um, the, it goes to the right ear and the right arm. So our first probe goes on the right hand and our other oxygen probe typically goes on the foot to get a post-ductal oxygen saturation. Let's go back and look at our heart diagram and see why we might see changes in our pre and post-ductal oxygen saturations with PPHN, with increased pressure in the lungs, and with right to left shunting across the PDA. If we think back to that blood flow is dependent on pressures and we look at this heart, we see that when the pressures are really high in the lungs, the blood is going to be forced back through that pathway, which is normal in utero. Now, this is a problem when a baby's already born because the placenta is not present to provide oxygenated blood. The lungs are responsible for oxygenating blood. And if the pressure is so high that the blood can't flow into the lungs to be oxygenated, this can cause problems. As blood moves from right to left across the PDA, we will see mixing of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood below the PDA. And that's why you'll see a higher oxygenation sat on that right hand where it's pure oxygenated blood versus below the PDA when you may have some of that mixing from that blood crossing over from the pulmonary artery. Now there are many different causes for PPHN, this increased pressure in the lungs, and we won't go over the specifics in this video, but some of the things that can cause these pressures to stay elevated would be if your baby is septic, a meconium aspiration syndrome picture, as well as different cardiac congenital anomalies. But for now, we are just going to focus on how the blood actually moves through the heart when these increased pressures are present. As we mentioned before, remember that the there are two things that can decrease the pressure in the lungs. The first is the removal of fluid, and the second is the presence of oxygen. Oxygen relaxes the smooth muscles around the arterioles in the lungs, and it helps to further reduce the pressure. Now, if some pathophysiology is keeping the pressures inappropriately high in the lungs, there are several things that you will see as part of your patient's clinical picture, as well as several different treatment options that we have available. We've already talked about one of the first things that you'll see, and that is a difference between your pre and your post-ductal oxygen saturation. You will typically see changes in your pre, which remembers in your right hand, and your post that are between five and 10%, but really anything greater than 10% is significant. Your patient will also be hypoxemic, and you will diagnose all of these findings with an echocardiogram, which is an ultrasound of the heart. 
As far as treatment option goes, we can provide respiratory support to these patients. And one of the main ways that we'll do that is to provide them with CPAP. This pressure helps keep the lungs and therefore the airways and the alveoli open. We can also give these patients, again, additional oxygen to help relax the smooth muscles around the arterioles. And finally, if your patient is really, really sick, if they have an incredibly high amount of pulmonary pressure and there's a lot of shunting across the PDA, you will see additional symptoms and your patient may be a candidate for ECMO where the lungs would be bypassed completely. I hope this video was helpful and that you are now able to better understand the pathophysiology of a PDA in a term baby who has really, really high pulmonary pressures and that you're able to predict some of the symptoms that you'll see when you have that right to left shunting across the PDA. Hopefully, if you understand the pathophysiology of the things that we've talked about, you won't have to memorize any of the symptoms that we also talked about because you'll understand what you'll see based on where the blood is going. If you found this video helpful, please be sure to share it with your friends and your colleagues give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any video content from me in the future.